You're listening to The Hikam with Sheikh Zahir Bekas of the Lotri Foundation. In this podcast, Sheikh Zahir explains the aphorisms from Ibn Atta al-Laz Fim's Book of Wisdoms, Al-Hikam al-Ata'iyya, a classical manual of spiritual development. Visit secretshub.org for online courses, our reliable answer service, and engaging media. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> Rabbil Alameen, wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما بفضلك وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم امين so we reach number 52 in the hikam of sheikh ibn taylah so he says uh, here he says in namal إنما أورد عليك وأوارد لتكون به عليه واردا. So he said, Ibn uh, Ta'ilah, concerning the what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala can give. He says that Allah that He made uh, He made uh, experience or spiritual insight come to you. So that you might come to him through those insights or through it, through those insights that he gives to you. Awarid uh, in the books of spirituality, in the books of uh, uh, in the books of spiritual excellence, awarid is what comes from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to the servant, and they come. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can inspire his servants, ilham. Ilham, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for alhamaha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word ilham. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends these uh, divine inspirations to the uh, to people. And the divine inspirations that come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they come in order to uh, to inspire the person to worship him or they come in order to direct the person of what to do or what to abstain from or not or what not to get involved with so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he sends these and this is uh, this is guidance because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always guides the believers always there's always guidance coming there's always uh, something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coming to the person, to his heart. Now, the person that, uh, that gets these inspirations, and most people get them, if not all of them, get divine inspirations from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But not everyone acts upon it, or not everyone can decipher when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends them uh, ilham or in, in, inspires them or, or sends inspiration to them. Why does not everyone understand or becomes clear to them when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends them these, uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends them these khawatir, these, these insights or these <clears throat> thoughts? It's because of what they have placed between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They've placed hijab. If you've placed a veil between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then what comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may not be uh, may not be known to you. And it may be blocked or concealed or veiled from you. The more veils that you have or that you've placed between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then guidance becomes even opaque. It becomes obscured. It becomes very obscured. And so by moving away the, those veils, that's when it becomes clear. Clarity takes over. And clarity of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants one to do, or wants one to pursue, or wants one to worship, or in the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala determines it. And the veil that people put up between them and Allah could be many things. It could be, it could be their children, their wives, their, their, it could be money, could be wealth, 
could be reputation, could be all kinds of things. It could be knowledge itself. It could be anything that they place between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when they place it between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they do not see or they do not recognize what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants them to do. And so he says, Ibn Ta'ala, Shaykh Ibn Ta'ala, Rahmatullah, he says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends you these, he sends you warid, he sends you uh, notions, insights, he sends you uh, these uh, uh, these spiritual insights, he sends you uh, these, uh, these thoughts uh, that he wants you to act upon. For what reason? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to come to him. Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send it to the servant? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants the servant to come to him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants the servant to leave off the, uh, the matters that, uh, that obscure their insight to him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants the servant to leave off uh, those things that, that causes them to be blind to guidance from him. And, or not just guidance in what we know of guidance guidance of what we know is iman that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides us to, to believe in him and believe in the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all of the tenets of the faith and all of the arkan of the faith and so on no, this guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends to the servant is guidance about what to do <coughs> or inspires in them about acts of worship that they should concentrate on or things that they should who should be seeking or aspiring to. This is guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends to the servant. And it comes to the heart of the servant. Wa'arid, they come to the to the heart of the person. The heart is just a vessel. If it is pure, then the heart will understand when in when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends them something. If it's pure. If it's not pure, then they may not understand. You may not understand. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says what? He says, <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that your wealth, <clears throat> the things that you accumulate in this world, or that you value in this world, of dunyawi things, of material things, and your children, awlad, uh, that your children are not going to come to la yinfa. They're not going to benefit you. They're not going to be of much benefit to you, except the ones who comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a pure heart, qalban salim, a heart that is pure, a heart that is sound. And the soundness of the heart, salim is, is soundness. The soundness of the heart, if something is sound, then they're able to do what? Then it's able to function properly. So you call something salim because it's, it's, it, it's able to function in the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants it to function. If something functions in the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants it to function, then it is sound. It's sound. So the heart of the, of the person, if it's sound, then it's able to capture all of the water that comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's able to put them into place. It's able to act upon them. Whether acting upon the, the inspiration that come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is through a form of worship or through obedience or through thinking positively or through any of these means, they come to the person. They come to the person. And when they come to the person, then the person is inspired to do something that is proper or something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finds pleasing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may find, may send you something uh, and sends you um, these inspiration in order so that you may do something or abstain from something that is pleasing to him. That is pleasing to him. And this is the, so one has to purify the vessel that they come to, the heart. One has to purify the heart. To purify the heart is worship itself. But worship through, in what way? Worship that is sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, worship that has ikhlas in it. That purifies the heart. 
if the worship does not have a khlas in it, then it may cloud the, it may cloud the heart even further. Because worship, anything in this world can become a veil to the servant. Anything, anything at all in this world can become a veil. Even your own worship. Your own worship can become a veil. A veil to you. How? How does worship, how can worship become a veil to the person? If they take pride in it. If they take pride in the worship that they're doing and they think through the worship that they're doing that they're better than others or they become arrogant in the fact that they think they worship better than other people, then their worship becomes a veil to Allah. It doesn't help them. What it will do is it will cause them grief, their worship. Because they, there's no ikhlas in it. There's no ikhlas in it. So when, you, when we want to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not for anything else, for the sake of Allah. And we make our worship, we make it sincere for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That means that we rectify the, the niyyah that we do it for. And that your worship is the same. How do you know your worship is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? that it's the same whether people are around you or pe no people is around. Whether you're in the gaze of people or not in the gaze of people, your worship is the same. Your salah is the same. You give the same amount of sadaqah. You treat people the same. You smile to people. You talk nicely to people. Whether people are around that is looking at you, hearing you, or whether no one is around or that you know. That you treat that you are the same person, that you do not vary, you don't vary yourself, or your character does not vary depending on the people that are around. That your worship does not vary, depending on whether you're home or in the mosque or out in the public eye or not in the public eye. That it is exactly the same, and if it's the same, then there's a source of ikhlas within it. There's a source of ikhlas in it. And this is what is sought of the servant. What is sought of the servant is that their works become, that they become mukhlis, that they become sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants of the servant, that they work on being mukhlisi, that they work on being sincere servants to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that they can have what, Sheikh Ibn Atta'ala is talking about that the that they become uh, that it becomes clear when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends them uh, insights when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends them you know spiritual he sends them ilham Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspires in them that they understand where that inspiration is coming from and they act upon it that they act upon that that insight and this is what is hoped. The Prophet Islam, he says, the polisher of the heart is dhikr Allah. That what polishes the heart is dhikr, is remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what does it do? It polishes the heart. It polishes the heart from what? It polishes the heart from rust and from spots, black spots, from sins. That's what it does. The remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala avoids the person from acting and falling into sins through through uh, through ghafla, through heedlessness. The person is heedless of Allah, meaning he doesn't remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have a propensity to fall into sin, a greater propensity to fall into sin. If one remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then one is capable of, of having, one has more strength to avoid the falling into sin. But one has to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet Islam, he says the polisher of the heart is dhikr, is dhikr Allah. The remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever form that it takes. The dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can take the form of, of worship, of Qur'an, of giving in charity, of saying one of the athkar uh, that comes to us, any of the form, making dua, could be anything, the care of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in whatever form that it takes, it becomes the polisher of the heart and it makes the heart pure. 
Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to be loved. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to be loved and He wants to love the servant. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the spiritual insights that come to the servant if you want to understand them and you want to act upon them then work on purifying the heart. And working on purifying the heart means that you make your intention purely for the sake of Allah. A. B. That your worship is the same no matter where you are. And C, and that, and that you try your best to, to put qual- uh, quality behind your worship. That at all moments that you try to better your worship. Always try to better your worship so that it's something better. And that, and always remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always make the care of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always try one's best to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or be in the company of those who remember Allah. Because if you're in the company of those who remember Allah, then you will remember Allah. If you're in the company of those who remember the dunya, then you'll remember the dunya. So if you're in the company of those who remember Allah, you're not going to, it's hard to slip into ghafla. It's hard to slip into heedlessness. If you're in the company of those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst the servants who are pleasing to him and loving to him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us, guide us, protect us, forgive our elders, our parents. Give them good health and long life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who are passed away, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them his mercy, his makfir, and his shade. Those who are sick, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heal them and cure them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve our children on the deen. Protect them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep their foot and firm in his, in his sirat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us, forgive us. Those who are faced with difficulties, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, ease their difficulties. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them openings to overcome their obstacles and their difficulties. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our homes amongst the homes of the believers and make our last words our best words. Thank you for listening to the Hikam with Sheikh Zahir Bekas. Help Seekers Hub spread the light of guidance to millions around the world by supporting us through monthly donations by going to seekershub.org slash donate. Your donations are tax deductible in the U.S. and Canada.